similar to the one you did. Yep, yep. Um, well, just with the, the bridging, getting like a structure from your feet to your hip. That's the anchor leg. Anchor leg. Yeah, um, I guess. So the anchor hand belongs to my opponent, anchor leg belongs to me. Yeah, when I'm just holding from that being more. Lay down, my friend. But when, when Rob's underneath you, you don't feel like you're in control of your own. That's the plan. If I'm here on top of you like this, so what, what do you need to improve? What do you feel like you need to improve? Sure. Say so you can't get this out. How can you deal with this position? Because if you can get this out, you can block this, you're wonderful. Yeah? yeah? You don't have to worry, I can't keep my weight on you. We just talked about that. But now I've got it. Yeah, don't fight me. Ooh, that's better. That's better. You should fight me. You should fight me. So I'm not going to fight you, to hold me however you want. Put your weight down. Now I want to imagine you're 150 kilos. Do you think it's going to be possible for me to get my shoulder up? This one? 150 kilos, you think I'm going to be able to lift it? I don't reckon. But you know what I can do? Turn my hips. I can turn my hips. You see now my ribs here? So they're expanding. The problem comes here. You want to fire my back, put your weight, rest your weight on my chest. You can hear it in my voice. You can hear the pressure going through me. I'm stuck now between the floor and you. I cannot expand. If I try to do this, yeah, if I can do this, I can breathe. But now drive me back down. How many times do you want to do that before I'm exhausted? Pretty cool, not many, yeah? I'm going to be dead pretty soon. And if you're smashing my face, the shoulder too, oh, this is a nightmare. So you smash my face, smash my face. So now here, look. can you feel that here? You're on top of my head, but are you crushing me? Pull my chest, crush, crush. Can you see how I'm breathing? Yeah. You cannot stop this. If you try to mount, now let me check your leg. Now, when I'm here, I don't do this. Do I tell you why I don't do this? Yep. Anyway. When you frame like this from bottom side, see if I try to go around your head, follow me. Follow me. Good. If I try to walk into your legs, just frame up. Look, beautiful. The problem comes when I do this now. You can follow me. Everything here is designed to stop me smashing you, isn't it? So I'm trying to smash you frame up. Look at that frame. They may could have followed me up here, could you? Now that's a big problem. Grab my head. Hold my head. Hug it like you love me. Yeah. No, no, like that. Keep that one there. Just on my head like you love me. Right there. Beautiful. So now look, you can follow me here. I can't go that way. If I try to go up to your belly, keep my head down to your chest. Keep that on my hip. Now, as I'm going up, bridge on one leg. Keep bridging weight. Keep bridging, keep bridging. Don't do anything. Keep bridging. Keep bridging. Keep bridging. Keep bridging. Stay there. Stay there. How can we get there? Let's say you bridge and I get my knee up. Bridge. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Keep my head down. Stop. Put this head on my hip. Point your knees this way. This way. Point both your knees there. Make sense? So, sit there for come here on. If your opponent is big enough and he's got the cross face, this is already in, yeah? The chances of you driving this up are very small. If I do this, I'm very confident I can keep the weight off my head. But I don't care about weight being on my head. Well, I don't want it on my jaw, but if it comes up here, I don't care. It's not going to crush my skull. What I cannot have happen is my lungs get crushed. Yeah, now you can't breathe. Now you're in a horrible spot. Don't do this, because if I do this, Rob's going to jump in your belly, and I can't stop him. Now the pressure's even worse. Oh, this is horrible. 
So I don't know. Keep him with me. Now I know some of you are going to say, but he's going to armbar me. If he tries to armbar me, go for your armbar. Which armbar you want? This one. You want straight armbar? Whatever. As he goes for his move, as soon as he starts attacking, is when I start defending. I don't have to defend him if he's not attacking me. Don't not do things because you're scared. Do you understand? Go, oh, I better not put my arm there because he might armbar me. If I don't put it there, he's going to go up. And I can't reach him. If I just do this, he's going up. And now you have a big problem. So when he's down here, I hold him. If he starts wrapping up my arm, well, now it's time to go. Now it's start, start, time to start defending this. Because I know he's going to move. Does that make sense? But I have to decrease pressure and chase. You have to do something. This is how it works. If someone's either going to hold you, or they're going to let go to submit you. When they're letting go to move, that's your time to move. When you're being held, now if you can, of course, there's, we fight to free ourselves and we don't want to be stuck in a bad spot. But if I'm stuck in a bad spot, don't go kill yourself to get out. Make sure you can survive that bad spot until your opponent switches off his tact. Does that make sense? So the anchor foot, which is where we sort of start, is this outside leg. If he's on top of me here, right now Rob's crushing my chest, I can't breathe. If I try to do this, obviously I can breathe. But push me back now. It's not high if it's stronger than me to do that. Yeah? Frame is here, frame is here. You can even bring this here to the elbow and drag back to make it harder for him to clamp up. Now the outside leg, this knee stays in touch with him, my thigh. My other leg moves my hips out till I've made an angle. So when he tries to put my hips down, they do not go. This is always going to breathe. I can always breathe right here. Yeah, if I'm like this, you have no expansion. <laughs> Every breath is getting shorter and shorter. As soon as you make this here, and he can be as strong as you want, I'm not going towards him. What's all my foot's doing? Heel, toe. I'm going away. Now I'm framing here. So this is touching him to, to monitor because if I don't touch his leg, I can't feel it till it touches my belly. So I need to know where it is. This is holding me here. Rob can pin my shoulders. But he cannot pin my ribs. Now I can breathe. And from here, we start to begin our escapes. Yeah? Our exits. If you don't understand this anchor foot, it's all your exits, and all your escapes are going to be very difficult here. Right? So once we understand this, from here I'm controlling him, controlling him down, leg against him, moving my hips to the side. And don't go out so far that you completely decide that this leg cannot monitor. I need to still be sort of 45 with my hips facing up. When I feel impressed, I can press. Point my hip towards him. Away, towards him. When it's time to make an escape from here, my leg comes against his body, I bridge to him, I drop my hips down and bring my knee to the floor. So, go pretend you're holding his side now right here. Pretend you got someone. If there's someone in here, I'm trying to bring my knee from the side. This leg, this bone. I'm trying to bring it in this way. It runs into his hips, it runs into his belly. It just doesn't fit. If I bring it this way, it goes straight in the hole. Does that make sense? So this bone here, when he's on top of me here, the entry is right here. But it cannot come that way, horizontal. It has to come down vertical. Because sit up, just sit up. There's a hole down here, a huge hole. Now see if I leave my knee right there, it's dragging on his hips, it's dragging on his belly when he's bent down, it's hard to bring it inside. If I bring it up and down, it fits straight in the hole. Right, and the hole, that's where the hole is. Look like it's here, it's right here. And it gets bigger going down. It's like a cave. Does that make sense? So here, from there, I cannot pull this this way. That's running into Rob's ribs. Even if I do this, if I move this way, I have to move out the length of my femur, which is huge. That's not how much space I have to make. I'm not going to make that much space. But what about if I can bring it in that way? So I, I, I'm framed up, I'm doing everything I'm doing. I make my little anchor, I bridge, and now I turn my hip to pull my knee down to the floor. Make sense? So if you look at me, 
Here, I cannot put my knee on the ground. I cannot. If I turn my hip a little, I can. Yeah? So when I'm here, I start to turn here. I bump him here and pull my leg here. This is another little trick you can do. Do these four fingers, I hook in the bicep, and I drag to my side. Always hold the head. If you're not gonna hold the head, you must hold the arm. Yeah, don't do, don't do, not don't. I shouldn't say don't, but use this as little as possible. Right, this is good, good for beginners when you're starting out to keep the pressure off. As you start to advance in rank, I want you to start knowing where your opponent is. I'd much rather know what wrong with me right here than loose. Because loose, now he's going to a distance that he can control. He can sit up, I'm just sit up on your knee, touch my nose, don't let me touch. Good. Big problem. Yeah, this is a huge problem. If, you, if you're ever in a position where you can, he can reach you, you cannot reach him, you've got a massive issue. Go to the same position. You cannot. You cannot just leave. Now I'm wanting space. So now, yeah. before, the typical way of looking at it is I'm trying to make all the space. He's trying to make all the space and I'm pulling myself to him. When you reverse the roles and you start, as the bottom person, starting to control the distance by holding them down, what's my first reaction? The first reaction is always the opposite to what the other person's doing. Correct. Right? Which is like now the top person is wanting to make space. Who would have thought of that? Who would think that the person on top who traditionally is wanting to crush the person is now the person who's wanting to make space to get away from you? You ever seen a boxer in trouble? Best people on the planet Earth are punching people in the face. You ever seen them when they're in trouble? What do they do? They grab it. And then the referee says, stop that. Go punch him in the head. Well, this is where we live. We live in the clinch. We start in the clinch. We don't get separated. When someone's on top of me, they can kick my ass. Grab them, they cannot. Now they have to joint lock me. They have to make me let go. Now when I'm just holding, oh, I just want to hug you like crazy. I need to hold you strategically. Because if Rob's on top of me here, right here where he is. Can you kick me with that leg? Nah, pull, 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 pull it back to me like you just did. What's going to happen? Yeah, you can crack in the guard. Now, can you hit me with this leg without walking, without advancing? Because if you start walking, I'm going to walk too. But can you hit me with that head, leg? No. So his legs are pretty shitty here, right here. Right, he's sitting on it. If I do this, touch my face with this hand. With this hand, with this hand. Touch it, touch it, just touch it. Touch it, so vulnerable. Touch my face with the other hand. Touch my face. If he starts walking to knee me in the head, you go around, I walk too. And then we get, we're gonna end up in position to throw it. Yeah. If he brings that knee up. <laughs> so you just follow. The, every, everything we do, all the positions, are based around not getting your ass kicked. It's all for fighting. The sport came second. Yeah? So everything I do when I'm on the bottom, I need to think, this guy's already past my legs. If I start doing this, imagine a fight. What would he do to me? He'd punch the shit out of me. Now, he can't submit me. He makes it really hard to submit me if I do this. But this is not, not this is crap. And this is the sport. When somebody passes my legs, I need to go where his hands are and his body is the whole time. Now he cannot hurt me. He's passed my legs, okay. But he can't hurt me. And because he realizes now that he can't just walk through to advance the position, when I've done this to him, 99% of practitioners are going to start focusing, targeting your limbs. They're going to start from here, they're going to start targeting my limbs. I guarantee you, this is going over my head. And this is where my next lot of steps are going to come into. Yeah. So if here it starts to go over my head, now I target with that arm. And I move that arm away from here. Yeah. And I move that arm. I come over back. So, <clears throat> I just said about 500 things. So, let's break them down. And you can work on them all together. When I'm here, forget about punches for now. I don't want him to mount, I don't want him to choke, I don't want him to arm lock. Okay? If I'm doing this, can you choke? 
Not really. Can you mount? So if I'm blocking here, if he starts lifting his butt, I just lift with him. Yeah? He's not going to mount if his head can't go up. Right? So now you can't choke, you can't mount. Can you arm up? He's going to fight this. So this is your sign. You're going to feel this either trying to come out, to come around and start isolating that arm, or he's going to work straight on that arm. He's going to start, yes, just like that. Yeah? So either way, come back down. If I feel him working on my arms, starting to set up my arm, look, I'm resisting, slip, and then I'm looking at the arm. Oh, that was the anchor man. You just let it go. And I can leave, remember? If he's not anchoring, what's holding me? Just your imagination. <laughs> if he's not holding my head. So if I'm here, remember, if, uh, he's here, he's got the cross, he's already in position. If he's not holding my head, so if he starts targeting this arm, is he holding me now? Go, 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 just go. Just go hold my head, I can leave. If he starts targeting this arm, stop right there. I'm going to bring my hand across the belly. Now, you see his elbow? If this elbow is in the middle of my ribs, don't, 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 don't do nothing, fancy, just stay exactly as you are. I'm going to walk this way, look what happens. I get stuck. His arm's in my way. What if I grab it and I pull it all the way into my armpit? Oh, what happened? I'm free. Does that make sense? So, let's look at it. Let's look at the first bit on its own and then we'll do this stage separate. So when I'm here, and you can, you do this, I do this as a drill in my class all the time. Person on top, we give them one skill at a time. So he's only allowed to try and choke me. I'm gonna do this. And when he realizes after about 30 seconds that he can't choke me, then we reverse positions and I do it. Then I say he's allowed to choke an arm off. So he's gonna be here, he's gonna try and choke an arm off. So he's gonna choke, so he's letting me go, he's letting me go. Let me go. If you let me go, go. And then we add the mount. And then all of a sudden you've learned to defend the position properly. Does that make sense? And once we've taken those three elements, remember, I need to put him back in my guard. My guard's defensive. So I need to not lose from him. If I make one more mistake from here, what happens? It's over. I can't make any more mistakes. So I sit my way, boom, and I react. I don't try to fight my way out of here. If you fight your way out of here, you're going to get caught more times than you get out. Because I want you to use your Yes, body. I want to stop all momentum here. I've got to kill all the momentum here. Inertia is my friend here. He wants momentum. I'm shutting everything down. He has to make the movements now. And if he targets my, my, my head here, like by my, um, trying to remove his arm, he to target my arm, I frame and I go. If he targets, and you can even do from here, you can frame on his gear and go. If I feel him trying to um, uh, target the far arm, just actually just do this arm first. So we're here, does everyone know how to attack the near side arm? From here? We haven't done many arm balls. You haven't? Mm -hmm. Alright. Don't worry about any of it then. I want you to keep this all as a concept and we'll go straight to the escape. Okay? You see where your elbows are on the floor? Put your hands exactly where your elbows are. Put one hand here. And put one hand here. I can't get off me. Stay there. See where he is? You see exactly where he is? That's where his elbow was and his other elbow was here. If I try to run, I can't run. If I do this, where well, that's all the way in my armpit, I'm out. Does that make sense? So, if somebody has me here inside now, see that elbow? That's in my ribs. If I put that in my armpit, all the way in my armpit, there ain't no way you can stop me walking around. Does that make sense? And this is how I use the escapes in combination. I use the guard recovery with that one there. So that's one of the things I do with you. One yeah. Sliding around on the yeah. The most important thing to understand here, you know, is when I'm on top of you, I'm here, it's cross body, boom, boom. He, the only reason he cannot run this way right now, even if he reaches through, it's because of this, this humerus. 
Well, I'm pretty sure. Turn that way, run that way. You can pull yourself through, don't pull yourself through. Just turn your ribs that way to the wall and run. See, it's not going to go. Pull this to your arms in. Now turn, just turn the wall. A little bit down, and we'll get it better down. Better down. And grab my hand. Perfect. Does this make sense? So you have your normal recovery with your legs, which is remember recovering our knee line. When I'm recovering my shoulder line, I need my shoulders free to turn. If he's in here, if he's up here, I can turn. I'm already out. So if I find myself, look at that now, can I turn now? No way, look, hips down. It's completely jammed. Now, if he goes this low, yeah, we're going to open up a can of worms, I don't know. <laughs> if he goes uh -huh. that low, we like to, yeah, I don't want to do that. Stay, stay here in my mid ribs, because yeah, we're going to change his things when he goes that low. We're going to go to our legs. So when he comes up here, look, and here I'm still hanging on to him. If I feel that arm creeping up, like here I immediately go boom. If he targets my arm here, boom. Why? Let's say he rips rip it up. Just pick, no, no, pick it back up. up, 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 up. You see this? I have a big problem now. My arm's stuck up here. He's going to step over my arm bar. Come back. As soon as I feel him wrapping my arm here, right there, I turn my hand and I wrap his arm back. So now if he picks up my arm, I'm going to try and pick up your body. Do it. My hand sneaks in front. Right here. You want to see this? And I've got a little wedge. I have a beautiful little frame where I can move out. I've got a clear path for my leg. And a little off the pace you here too, but don't worry about it. Just get your guard ready. Yeah? You keep, when you, whenever, you, sit up, whenever you're caught in any position, is everyone in here friendly with everyone? Or is, is there like an asshole in the group? There's <laughs> nobody likes. Everyone's pretty friendly, yeah? yeah. You would be. You're just, looking at Yeah, you're the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to come here and experiment through these positions with your friends. So go to the positions and see what he can do. Well, just lay there and see what can you do. Let him do everything he can do, then start stopping one at a time till he can't do anything. When he can't do anything, then what can I do? And start looking for the little holes. And then you're going to start tying what he's doing together with what you can do. This is the only way it works. Trust the chest, like I was saying to you. When I'm in a bad spot on the mat, I mu almost must wait for my opponent to make a move so I can make a move. If you're stuck in a bad spot, don't run. Don't try to run. Let them come. They have to come and kill you. Don't try to run through, you're gonna get caught. Every time you call, get out, get out, you're gonna make it worse. Sit still and make them make all the play. And then you've got a chance to overbalance, overcommit them. Does that make sense? You guys ever pushed a car that had a flat battery? What's the hardest part? Start, the start bit. Once it's already moving, it's easy to get going. Like if a few guys will start pushing the car, yeah, I'll come and help now once it's rolling. No problem. <laughs> Jesus is the same. If, I, if someone on top of me is standing still and I'm trying to move him, it's like a nightmare. It's like, I'm, it's like a nightmare. Instead, if I sit here and I relax, and now he has to move, when he moves, I'm going to show him how he needs to escape. Yeah. So as soon as Rock moves, because I'm waiting, I'm waiting for him to move so he can make himself vulnerable. But I'm and he's moving. turning the tails on me by asking me to move, so I'm showing him my move first. Correct. And the reason I'm not moving is because one wrong move and I'm dead. And I stop all, I make it hard to move me. I hang on to all my stuff, hang on to him, and I say, you move. Because now once he starts to move, he gives me some direction. He gives me some movement, some, something. Does that make sense? It's the rolling car. Because oh, otherwise, there's the guy underneath. The guy on top could be, have any possibility. You don't know what I'm thinking. I'm sitting on top and I can be thinking 50 things. Correct. Yeah? So he's waiting for me to show him my attention. And then it's like, ah, I don't have to worry about 50 things, I have to worry about one. 50 things, but not really. Yeah. 50 yes, but not really. Because he's thinking about mounting me, choking me, or unlocking me. Now, there's a million ways all those things can happen, but they're the three things he's thinking about doing. That's the three things he's gonna do. How he's going to arm bar me? How he's got two arms, so there's multiple choices there. But then the chokes, if I hold his arms, they're pretty much out of the picture. Now I can pretty much take it out. So we start to eliminate this guy's options and then wait. If you had a mouse in that wall and there was three openings in the wall, 
how would you kill the mouse? Would you stand with a mallet and wait to see it and then, and then run to the next hole? Probably bait it. Or you'd put two, you'd like block two, two holes. holes and then you sit at the next the third hole like that, all with bait or, yeah? Yeah, you would. But you, you I'm not talking about actual, I'm talking about like Tom and Jerry mouse, like a smart one, yeah? <laughs> so there's three holes, you've got to stop, there's one option now. And when the fucker comes out, you're going to get him. Yeah, and it's the same here with jiu-jitsu. When I'm stuck on the bottom, I can't just flailing, oh, I've got to get out. All your emotions, all your inexperience, all your lack of ability to fight off your back, all this time is what tells you you've got to get out now. You don't got to get out now. All you've got to do is not die. Correct? Don't lose. If you don't lose, you can fight on. Even if you're there for five minutes. Has anyone ever been stuck in a bad spot for like most of the round and then somehow got out at the end? Maybe even one. Tap the guy. Does that happen? Or well, even if you didn't win, did you just get out of a bad spot after a long time and you didn't give up? Well, you're going to experience this more and more and more as you go on. Your opponent gets an advantage. I can't think I can fight my way free. I have to take all the pace out and wait for him now. Force him to take a direction. And if you start putting obstacles in the road, you're going to feel the road he's taking right away. So then we take the other road. He may, you talked about my brother before. I have two older brothers. One's 13 years older than me, one's 12 years older than me. So they're a lot older. Just to kick my ass when I was a kid. Look, even though they're that much older, it's the mercilessly kick my ass. But if I got behind the dining table, I was home free. They couldn't catch me. They couldn't catch me like skipping against the wall. Come they on, couldn't, they couldn't catch me around the dining table. Or if I got to a car in the driveway. So when my brother would run this way, I'd run that way. When he'd run that way, I'd run that way. Put it on the mat if you want. And I would never run away from the car. Out in the open, because 30 meters out in the open, I was, I was getting caught. But around the car, I could stay away from him. That's how I fight Jiu Jitsu too. I don't have to like run away and completely get away. I just have to stay just away from him. Just away. Just far enough away. Does that make sense? So when I'm caught in a bad spot, where is he? Yeah. When I'm caught in a bad spot, controlling the guy comes down to all four of my limbs working. My outside limb, my anchor leg, has to be holding me, holding my ground so I don't get smashed in the far side. My inside leg, the ones close to him, has to monitor him and know where he is and protect this space that we talked about. So he comes close to me and protects this space and he starts getting up high. And my arms, he must know where his arms are. Now, when you start doing this as a white belt, you're going to get submitted, you're going to get mounted, it's going to all go wrong. But it's going to go wrong anyway. Whether you're like this or like this, it's you're going to get mounted and beat up anyways. You know, start hugging people. You're going to anticipate their movements a lot better. If you're touching their limbs, you're going to feel them move. And you can react to them here. If you're not touching them, you're trying to make all the play, your opponent reads you. Pedro Sousa is the, the best. Like most people, if you, if you go to Las Vegas, everyone's playing poker like this, yeah? Their hands. He goes, when people are, it's like they're playing poker like this. Imagine you went to Vegas, you were the only one playing like this, and everyone else was like that. Hey, you know what I mean? Holding their hand to you. Wouldn't you want to play that game? You play that game, you'd be like, yeah, I'm playing that game. I can hold them like this, and everyone else like that. You just so you can make people do this. If you slow down a little bit with what your intentions are and hang on to them, you're going to see their intentions, you're going to feel their intentions, and then you intercept them. Does that make sense? This is your only chance when your opponent's here. It's your only chance your opponent's stronger. You can't overpower them. You can't run over them. You have to wait and catch them on their movement, catch them on their timing. So when the big guy's pushing here, you gotta hold him, and when he really leans, then you dip, chip him in the same direction. Judo works his way, it all works his way. So now, so I'm gonna stop talking, because I've been talking about this for two days. Let's make a quick drill of this. So that we all find the sort of step in close, we're gonna start right here in the cross face. So this face, smash my face. Oh, this is horrible. Bad, bad, bad. It's really bad if I want to look this way. Smash my face. Oh, it's horrible. What if I want to look this way? Smash my face. It's not so bad. Correct? So I'm here. I'm framing his head. Bring your leg down. If he puts his, put your leg up again. If his leg is up and I cannot reach the hip, I'm coming to the elbow. Four fingers in the crook of the elbow, elbow to my side. So when he smashes my face now, your shoulder can't get as far forward as before. Even if he touches me, I'm not crushing me. And I'm loading your forearm. And you're loading up, you're going to get half-pin. Yeah. But don't worry about the half-pin. We're not going to go to the half-pin. So right here, 
I feel this, I'm coming to the firearm right here. I'm going to bridge up, not towards him. I'm bridging straight up, straight up. And I'm pulling here to get Rob's uh, humerus as close to my armpit as possible. Once I, get, once I get to this position here, I'm bailing my hand, it's coming in the hole. You can even join like this and keep them up here. They can't come back. From here, I'm going to let go, stretch my leg, and I'm spiraling to the outside and catching his head. Yeah. No gig, this is easy as hell. You watch, who watches MMA? Yeah. Happens all the time. All the time. MMA, you're going to see this move happen all the time. Unless it goes up here, bang! All the time. You're a yeah. Yeah, you can do a but it's not, it's not. If I'm anticipating all this stuff, like I know when I do this, he's in position to potentially, so I can come to a dance in positions of, just play with the, the escapes, and you're gonna, even if you get caught or whatever happens, you play video games, don't you? Who else plays video games? You know when you start a new video game, and you're running along, you're your little man, you're running along, and there's a freaking hole, you don't see it, you fall in the hole and you die. So the next time you start the game, you know, there's a hole there. So you're running along the stage, and you jump the hole, and then the crocodile gets you. You jump the hole, dodge the crocodile, and the monkey throws the shit out of the tree. <sighs> Jump the hole, dodge the crocodile, dodge the monkey. And as you keep playing the video game, you remember the level. Yeah? You remember where all of Jesus is exactly the same. You're gonna get caught with everything. How many times have you tapped, do you reckon? You reckon you can count? <laughs> I couldn't count how many. I've tapped a million times, man. Do you wanna get good at this? You have to lose a lot. You have to lose a lot. You have to play a lot. If you wanna play a lot, you're gonna lose a lot. Now, what happens is, the longer you play, the less you lose. But you never stop losing, you still lose. You still lose, it just happens a lot, lot less as you get better. You, you get over it. Yeah, and you get over it too. You're gonna look, accept it. Everyone loses. There's no one that is good at jiu-jitsu that started that way. Everyone started where you all are in the white belt. Everyone started. And he was there, Ariel Gracie was there, Pepper Sauer, Hicks, all of them. Nobody came out of the womb grappling. Everyone had to learn it. So everyone was shitty. The way you get past being shitty quickly is coming here playful. Big smile. When you lose to a move, shake your partner's hand and say, man, show me what you did. That was awesome. And they will show you, if you compliment them and tell them how nice they are and how good their move is, they will show you right away what they did. If they tap you and you're like, that guy doesn't want to show you nothing. I'll teach you next time. Yeah. you got to be super fun. Now you're never going to figure it out. And I'll tell you now. It took me 13 years to get a black belt. You cannot fight like a crazy person for 13 years. I nearly did, I did it for about 10, and then my, my body, was, I was looking at the black belt like the finish line. It was gonna, that was where I was gonna hang up my gear and say I was, I got a black belt. Because I, I had ruined my body. I'm sure you've probably heard a million stories from him saying the same thing. Spent the first 10, 15 years training like a moron, trying to beat everyone, like it matters if you beat everyone. Get good at the art. If you get really good at this martial art, it will be rewarding forever. It will reward you for, and you never have to stop. And you won't break yourself in the process. It's problem solving. It's more like chess than it is like wrestling. But you have to learn how to move the pieces first. So as a white belt, you just learn how to move the pieces. So don't panic. When you come to class, super friendly, half your effort, leave it in the car. Come in here with half your power, half your muscle, half. That way, it's easier on the pride too when shit doesn't work. I was only trying hard. That's okay. I'm just trying to learn the move. When you learn, when everyone knows how to drive in here, yeah? Maybe except for this guy and this guy. When you were learning how to drive a car, did your dad just check you the keys and say, that one makes it go? If you get in trouble, just hit stop and turn your bureau. Just check you the keys. And... Oh. Is that how you learn to drive? Or... Baby steps. Baby steps in a car park, side by side, unless you're watching the clutch. Before he puts you on the road, he's right next to you. Well, this is even more important, this is more dangerous for your physical health, potentially, than learning to drive a car in a car park on your own. Or put you in a car park on your own, yeah, you can probably crash a car, you're probably not going to kill yourself on your own. Here, you can hurt yourself bad if you're going crazy and out of control. Slow down, do everything at half pace, half strength. Do you lift weights in the gym? Would you pick up a 200 pound dumbbell and try and curl it? Have you ever tried to curl out of an armor? Be honest, yes. Be honest if you've tried to curl out of an armbar. 
All right, would you go to the freaking gym and try to pick up a 200 pound dumbbell and curl it? And luckily, I've seen biceps tear off the bone. This is without elbow dislocations. I've seen pecs tear off the bone from people resisting moves. And the, the, the submission technically didn't get applied, but the muscle tore off the bone, right? So you wouldn't go pick up a dumbbell that you couldn't move and just keep trying. If a man is hanging off your arm from here and they're slowly taking it, they're gonna take it. If you can't hold them here and it's coming, you tap here. Don't wait for it to go out here and start getting damaged. Does this make sense? If you apply this as a philosophy to your training, you're gonna do all right. Anyway, that's enough talking. Let's do this move. My partner's here. I'm trapped in. Now, don't come to the shoulder, come to the crook of the elbow. My elbow is back for me. Like I'm pinning my shoulder blades together. Here on the neck, if you feel it advancing, I come straight down and I cut this off. Like I'm pulling this this way, using the back of my wrist, like that. Pull it up. From here, you can even punch this in. You can bridge towards him and punch my head inside. Both together, I'm pushing this real high to my armpit. And now you can run or you can spiral and catch his head. When I catch his head, notice I'm grabbing his chin. Like that. And I'm going to follow his head and come up. Very far his chin. Let's just try this instead. So right here, hook him. So you cannot smash my face, hold me. And eventually when I dance here, I'm going to bridge and pull. Hands coming in at the same time. Turn. Boom. Check it out, let's go. Three, two, one.